New York party stylist Amanda Orso known as the High Low Hostess, whose events have drawn A-list guests from P. Diddy, Fergie, Below Deck's Captain Lee, and Caitlyn Jenner. From birthday parties, weddings, and bachelorette parties, to family reunion sporting events and more. Always a passionate party giver, Amanda has been planning top-tier events from New York City to Los Angeles for the past 15 years. Hello everyone, and welcome to Health Check with Dr. Norstani. This is a special presentation on navigating the holiday season during COVID-19. As we approach the holiday season, it's essential to remember that while it is a time for celebration and togetherness, it's also a time when COVID-19 continues to affect our lives. Before we dive into our tips and recommendations with uh, our special guest, Amanda Orso, let's take a moment to reflect on current situations. Globally, almost 7 million people have lost their lives to COVID-19 infection. Almost 800 million people are confirmed with diagnosis of COVID-19 thus far. We'll be right back with our special guest after these messages. Are you looking to improve your health or restore your pH balance thanks to Balance 7? Balance 7 is a pH balancing supplement that promotes balance in the body's natural defenses. It's a mix of safe organic minerals that benefits the body with a burst of alkalinity. Now this proprietary dietary supplement, when consumed according to the recommended guidelines, is crafted to help reduce buildup of acid in the body by neutralizing dangerous acids. Now with this dangerous acid neutralized, the body is better equipped to self-heal, balance pH levels, reduce acid buildup, and maintain a strong, healthy immune system. And CEO Dr. Norstani says Balance 7 is one of the key factors in jumpstarting the journey to great health, serving its customers with natural and effective solutions to help them lead healthier lives. Now, for more information, just visit balance7.com or call 800 474 0558. Now, a special promotion is going on as well. You can get free shipping and a four ounce bottle of My Smooth Skin for new customers. Welcome back. Once again, COVID. We had enough of it, I think, in the last three years, but that's not going anywhere. I think it's going to stay for a very long time. We just have to figure out how to deal with it. And Knowing that holidays are upon us, we need to find ways to protect ourselves and what should we, and what shouldn't we do uh, in order at least to decrease the chances of giving, uh, getting COVID or exposing somebody else. So we know that fact. So Amanda, could you tell us how to have, uh, how to party goers protect themselves from COVID and protect others? I mean, I think it's a lot of common sense. I think us of, and I think it's just something we have to continue with. And that's not just with COVID, but any other illness, we never want to get anyone sick. Um, and we should really be staying home. So I think it's also about taking care of yourself in advance of the holidays so that you aren't sick and protect your immune system and, and all the things that I know you know, um, and that we have to remind ourselves of, you know, make sure we're getting good sleep and all of the other things that you need to do to protect your immune system in advance of the holidays. And because the holidays are stressful, um, you know, we have to do that even more so than maybe at other points of the year um, and just be mindful of those things. Knowing the facts of being as a physician and seeing thousands of patients, your immune system plays such an important role on combating COVID or any other disease in that process. So we are, you know, flu season is around the corner. We're not just talking about COVID, but we're also talking about just the regular flu that kills more people than COVID and has right. killed more people. And we have the other upper respiratory tract infection or viruses that all gets, uh, 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 people get exposed and people get sick and millions of people get admitted every year. So it's just not the COVID. It's just right. another virus that was deadly and uh, fortunately for all of us, it is getting better. I mean, people are not dying as much as, uh, as before. Uh, right. So uh, it's absolutely important in your immune system, boosting, enough sleep, enough rest, uh, supplements, all that plays a huge role in it, uh, a yes. role in prevention. 
And I think we just have to be more mindful during the holiday season and as party season wraps up because ramps up because we're just out a lot and we're busier and we're doing more. So I think it's, in my opinion, being a little bit more mindful um, about those things leading into the season so that we can enjoy and celebrate with our families. You know, so obviously you are the creator of huge parties and events. So what is your number one to go tip on creating a peaceful and fun environment uh, for family to get together during the holiday season? I think the number one thing is to be prepared. And of course, that is so important in so many different aspects of our life. But if you're about to host your family and friends for an upcoming holiday, being prepared, not just as it relates to your food preparation, but being prepared as it relates to maybe family dynamics that could be a little bit tricky, being prepared with the ambiance, so that, as you said, you can create something that feels very fun, very peaceful, not just for your guests, but for yourself as well. And you know, the more organized we are, I think the more peaceful we feel. I think anytime we feel disorganized or in a little bit of disarray, it's hard to then sort of get in the moment and, you know, feel good about what we're doing. So being prepared is always the most important thing. Um, and, you know, we can talk about some of those different aspects in more detail. Like I said, it's not just about food prep, but thinking about the ambiance of your event, you know, dimming your lights, lighting some candles, having a playlist or some music that's going to feel fun and peaceful. You know, your guests are also going to take their cue from you. So if they're entering an environment that feels peaceful and fun, you know, that's going to be how they sort of also interpret the party. So, so many things to think about as it relates to being prepared, but that is definitely the number one tip. So having a party, whenever I hear somebody's coming over or family or gathering, I'm, I'm extremely fearful as a physician. Now, when COVID started, I'm, I mean, I'm managing critical care. I lost, I mean, so many patients. I've lost more patients in two years than my entire career in the last 16 years combined. Wow. So it's, it's a very fearful for me. It's the personal and, you know, protection and protecting and preventive services become so important and so huge. And I know there's a lot of controversy when it comes to, you know, vaccination, masking, indoor, outdoor, et cetera. But when you are in the trenches, when you're in the field, when you're taking yeah. a loved one, and when you're seeing people die at all ages, not the, just the older, the younger, I mean, I have lost an entire family of patients, not just one per member of family, the entire family. here. So, I mean, it, it, it becomes, it's different. For, right. for you as opposed to somebody just got sick or had minimum symptom and recovered. Um, right. So I think that the most important part of it is planning ahead. And how can you yes. plan ahead to make sure you're prepared? Well, to your point, I think we also got really used to how special the idea of a very small sort of intimate event really can be. I mean, COVID sort of taught us like really having sort of your nuclear unit together is, is really wonderful. So not every celebration has to be a huge celebration and sort of smaller events, I think are actually more special in so many ways. So I think that's one aspect of it. But, you know, the other thing I think of not just from a, from a physical health component as it relates to COVID and the flu, like you mentioned, but sort of a mental component, like a lot of people in advance of having family and friends come over, feel sort of the stress of maybe differences in politics or like you just mentioned, a vaccination debate. And, you know, those sort of conversations can also be tricky when you're gathering friends and family. So as a, as a party thrower, as a party planner, um, I like to tell hosts, you know, have a few redirects in mind. If, if, for instance, you have sort of a tricky, heated conversation at the table, be prepared to kind of direct the conversation another way. I think that's something that you can plan ahead. Um, you know, also, if, if you're in the middle of a dinner and it gets kind of heated, it's a great time to... Um, make a toast and maybe toast to everybody's health and, and togetherness. Um, I also like to think about creating a seating chart. You know, if you do have family dynamics that are that are a little off, plan ahead, know where everyone's going to seat ahead of time so that the conversation won't maybe get as heated as it could otherwise. So those are some of the things I like to think about just from a mental perspective as it relates to throwing a party. I think planning those things can help. I mentioned before, um, you know, just lighting and music and things like that. I think that also can just kind of bring the the temperature in the room, um, you know, down to a really peaceful level. So I like to plan those things uh, as well. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we're going to have a lot more questions for you. Mm -hmm. 
Dear Balance 7, I'm writing to say thank you for giving me my life back. I'm 62 years old and a few months ago insomnia devastated my life. I had no energy, my mind was in a fog, and my memory was going. I was afraid it was dementia. My doctor prescribed a sleep aid but it had side effects and the sleep was never restful. I even resorted to remedies like acupuncture and a hypnotist. None of it worked. That's when I saw an ad for Balance 7. It claimed results in as little as three days and I thought, what do I have to lose? So I ordered a quart, an 11 day supply. For three days, I took one ounce three times a day as instructed. The taste was odd, but I gotta say, not bad. By day four, I felt amazing. I ordered a gallon and four weeks in, I'm sleeping again. My energy is up, the brain fog is gone, and my memory is back. Thank you, Balance 7. Balance 7 hits your stomach acid, producing powerful alkalinity, unlocking your body's immune system, releasing it from its acidic prison, allowing it to do what it was designed to do, keep you healthy. Balance 7, where your body wants to be. Welcome back. Amanda, thank you for all those tips. Um, you know, when you start the party, when people walk in and, and just sort of a silence usually and it starts with a silence and nobody knows how the whole thing starts what to do what is a good way to create fun activities uh, that break the ice well first of all you know when i host a party the first thing that people often ask as they walk in the door is how can i help i think it's human nature to want to help the host so if i'm hosting an event i like to sort of have a few things in mind again plan ahead for some small tasks that are easy for my guests to help with. So maybe that's filling water glasses, opening a bottle of wine, taking coats, helping to greet guests. So that's an easy way to put people sort of to work in a really simple way that keeps everybody busy. And it, it sort of sparks conversation in the process because it's easy to sort of converse as you're doing some of these smaller tasks, again, filling water glasses, lighting candles, things like that. So I think that's a, that, that, happens very naturally as people walk in the door. So that's one thing. Um, but I think when you sit down, if you're sitting down for a formal meal, you know, it's if it's Thanksgiving, for instance, going around the table and having everyone state what they're thankful for. It feels kind of corny and it feels kind of cheesy, but it can really spark a lot of conversation. It never tends to be just a one word answer. People tend to want to elaborate, which is a great way to get conversation going. And it's a great way to also steer conversation to something very positive. Um, you know, I think there's other just sort of silly fun games that you can play with your guests, you know, two truths and a lie. Um, there's a lot of card decks out now that are, you know, meant to spark sort of lively or deeper conversation. You know, you can have everyone pull a card from the deck, but it's a great way to get people talking about something maybe beyond just beyond the weather or again, beyond something that might be more controversial. Anytime we have a party or going to somebody's, even somebody's house, the host, I think, goes through a significant amount of stress and anxiety. I don't care who it is, right? Even if they have enough support or help or somebody's planning it, and I'm yeah. pretty sure you, uh, on your, that's what you do for a living. And you see that as stress, whether uh, it's a small party or a, big, a bigger event. Now, stress leads to so many problems down the road, not just even if it's a short term, absolutely it reduces your immune system or you're vulnerable now to disease process, especially during, um, you know, COVID season or, uh, you know, the season, flu season. Uh, yeah. So that amplifies everything else that your body is getting exposed to. Now, how can we, how can we manage that stress for just that event? Is there a specific pattern that you recommend or you have a certain, uh, you know, uh, to-do list, uh, a checklist that people could, you know, kind of check off to reduce their stress? I mean, there's just, just give me some tips for our viewers to see how they could manage that, their stress level. I mean, first, I always work backwards, of course. So if people are coming at seven, you know, you have to think about everything yeah. that has to be done before that. So that's generally where I start is a, a backwards list in the timeline, a literal timeline. Guests are arriving at seven. So I need to have this done at 645. And I sort of go backwards in that way. And I always allow some time to be done early because what I would actually like to do before my guests arrive is sit, maybe have a glass of wine before they come. It's a really it's a great opportunity to kind of uh, decompress for a moment before you do welcome people into your home. But, you know, I like to do everything from um, the serving platters I'm going to use. I, I, I know what they are ahead of time. I'll put a sticky note inside each of them ahead of time. So 
as I'm about to serve the food, I'm not trying to figure out which serving platter I'm about to use. I mean, there's a lot of small things you can do like that that are part of the preparedness. Um, you know, I test out my oven and as it relates to the configuration of where all of my dishes are going to go. You know, there's things like that that you can do advance that make you feel very prepared. And the more prepared you feel, the less stress you feel, of course. Um, you know, I love a buffet. I love a beverage station. The less you have to do as a host, the more calm you'll feel. As it relates to a beverage station, I put out maybe um, water, limes, lemons, um, you know, uh, different sparkling waters, wine, uh, a liquor, mixers, whatever it might be to create sort of a self-serve bar. It's another way that it's very easy for your guests. They appreciate it because they can serve themselves as they need, but it's something less that you need to do at an event as well. So it can also bring your stress level down. And of course, like if you have the time and I encourage people to try to find the time when they're planning and preparing an event is some sort of you know, stress relieving ritual before the event, you know, whether that's taking a bath, having a cup of tea, again, just being ready in advance. So you can sit and maybe have a, have a sip of wine or a glass of wine before your guests arrive, planning some kind of ritual that works for you that, that brings your stress level down. We're going to take a quick break. We'll come back. We'll continue this conversation. What's up, guys? My name's Justin, and look, I'm a podcaster, a natural bodybuilder, and a personal trainer, and I need energy all throughout the day. And sometimes coffee just won't do it, but what I've noticed is this Balance 7 here gives me all the energy I need all throughout the day. It not only increases energy, but it decreases inflammation, and it boosts immunity. And also for the guys, you're gonna wanna hear this. It increases stamina. You need stamina. So if you wanna be better, and look, who doesn't wanna be better? Then go pick up Balance 7. Are you looking to improve your health or restore your pH balance thanks to Balance 7? Balance 7 is a pH balancing supplement that promotes balance in the body's natural defenses. It's a mix of safe organic minerals that benefits the body with a burst of alkalinity. Now this proprietary dietary supplement, when consumed according to the recommended guidelines, is crafted to help reduce buildup of acid in the body by neutralizing dangerous acids. Now with this dangerous acid neutralized, the body is better equipped to self-heal, balance pH levels, reduce acid buildup, and maintain a strong, healthy immune system. And CEO Dr. Norstani says Balance 7 is one of the key factors in jumpstarting the journey to great health, serving its customers with natural and effective solutions to help them lead healthier lives. Now, for more information, just visit balance7.com or call 800 474 0558. Now, a special promotion is going on as well. You can get free shipping and a four ounce bottle of My Smooth Skin for new customers. Welcome back. Amanda, we have a lot of regulation. Obviously, COVID has caused chaos and a lot of misunderstanding, misinformation. People are extremely confused where to go to get proper. Uh, information in regard to uh, social distancing, in regard to the amount of people could attend an event, now, whether they should wear a mask, where they should, you know, do they do a buffet, do I do individualized meals, lighting, et cetera. I mean, the list goes on and on and on about what can we do. And also, it is so different in the county by county, right? Every city, every state has its own mandate. I mean, I can, as a physician, I have given up on realizing who's doing what and what should I follow. You know, mm -hmm. at the hospital, it comes in from Department of Health, we'll just follow that. I just gave up on figuring it myself. Now, if somebody is asking you and saying, Amanda, I want to have, you know, 70 to 100 people, <laughs> it's a big event you know, just guide me through that. What do you do? I mean, that's for us sending invitations, making sure that the host and the guest understand uh, their responsibility, individual responsibility, not only to the host, but everybody around them. I mean, gosh, I mean, I feel sort of like you um, as it relates to parties, obviously being a physician, it's a much bigger deal, but 
it's hard to keep track, as you said. I think um, not just keeping track of what's allowed, but understanding what someone's comfort level is, because that's something that's also, you know, um, very, there's a wide variety of people's comfort level in terms of what they want to do at a party. I think we've all learned to be flexible to some extent, and I think that's also been key. Um, you know, I really haven't done that many huge events in the last couple of years, just because of what you said. I think it's been easier to do much more intimate events. One of the things I've told people that have come to me to do larger events, particularly when COVID, we were kind of getting out of that first wave at some point. I can't even keep track of when that was, but you know, we sort of talked about rather than spending your money on having maybe a hundred people in an event, maybe maybe bring that guest list down and and realize maybe you can spend more money on the on the food or you know other other aspects, let your budget go further. So we sort of didn't throw really big parties. Um, I think though, I think guests have, in my experience in the party world, have come to understand that anything could change. So, you know, I think everyone's willing to adapt. So I think that's the good thing is people are willing to participate however you want them to participate, whether that involves, you know, social distancing, wearing a protective mask. I think guests are okay with that. Um, and I, and, and if they're not, I suppose maybe you don't want them at your event. Maybe they're not as close of a friend. Um, I think that's sort of part of it. But again, it's knowing your own comfort level. And if you're having something on a smaller scale, you know, understanding the comfort level, not just that you have maybe as a host, but knowing the comfort level that your guests have and, and being mindful of that and planning something accordingly. I mean, I know very well how my family feels in in all of those different areas and when i'm going to have an event i'm going to be mindful of that i'm not going to have an event that's going to make anyone feel uncomfortable um in a, in a safety point of view but to your point it's i don't know how any you know it's it's incredibly difficult to keep up with it so i think you have to really think about comfort level first and foremost and not just your own comfort level but of course the comfort level of your guests which is which is of equal importance so COVID hit obviously everybody's apart and virtual has become the new norm. Obviously, I mean, people have celebration virtually. They have, you know, obviously family gathering has transitioned to family meeting in a virtual world. Uh, now, in your experience, and that'd be a, a question that, you know, I don't have data for it, but has anybody asked you and said, hey, we want to throw a virtual party, help us out. And if so, please give us some, some details of how that works and how people could actually approach you or anybody saying, hey, I want to throw a virtual uh, party, but I want help. So believe it or not, I threw a virtual Super Bowl party, um, which was like <laughs> a very interesting task because everybody was watching at the same time. Everyone wanted to have snacks. You know, I think it's, you have to just be really prepared. Uh, really organized to throw a virtual event um, because you want to think about, you know, maybe you want to send out um, a little care package so that everyone has the same snacks or maybe there's a, um, you know, the same beverage or, you know, that's a very generous way to do it is to send sort of a little pack out ahead of time. Um, we've also done things where we sent out sort of a little suggested list. You know, if you want to participate, be fun if you bought this, this and this, because these are the things we're going to eat and drink together. Um, and you know, a big part of it is doing some kind of like game for the Super Bowl. We did like a virtual bingo. Um, you know, doing something that in that case it was very easy. They could print out their cards at home. We sent the virtual. We, we sent the PDF so that they could do that. Um, but doing something that's just really again being very organized so you can plan it in advance. So that you can get the information to all of your guests in advance. Um, but you know, it works. We we've all done them and. Um, it's it's better than nothing, you know, be, at least being able to see someone face to face, even if you can't be in person with them, but just kind of planning the same way you might a typical event, but doing it much further so that your your guests can enjoy the same the same food or the same drinks, like I said. Amanda, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you for all the insightful tips and tricks that you provided us. We appreciate your time. Well, uh, thank you. I'm pretty sure we're going to see you in the future with, uh, when we have a big event. So thank you okay. for being with us. We're going to take a quick break and we'll be right back. 
On November 21st, 2021, my family was told by my doctor to prepare for the worst. Like many, I ended up with pneumonia thanks to COVID, cryptogenic organizing pneumonia to be exact, a very rare lung disease. I suffered major weight loss, couldn't breathe on my own. I also had an underlying autoimmune, which caused major complications. My body was completely depleted. So there I was, 49 years old, not vaccinated, fighting for my life, loaded up with prednisone and on heart medication to keep my heart rate under control. After being hospitalized for about a month, I was transferred to an extended care rehab facility to learn to walk again. This is where I started taking Balance 7 loyally. I knew I had a long road ahead, and after everything I had gone through, what did I have to lose? I was still on oxygen and heart monitoring. Doctors told me that the pneumonia could affect me the rest of my life. At that time, I didn't think I would ever live a normal life again. Balance 7 immediately helped me gain my strength back. At just 100 pounds, I was exceeding my physical therapy goals. My energy and appetite increased. Somehow it helped my overall health. My boyfriend contracted COVID and has been sick recently, and I did not get sick either time. My doctors are blown away. I have made a full recovery. I will faithfully take my Balance 7 the rest of my life. Balance 7 was, is my blessing. Welcome back everyone to this important discussion on COVID-19 and the holiday season. On September 12, 2023, CDC recommended a COVID-19 vaccine updated for 2023 to 2024 for everyone aged six months and older to protect against these serious illnesses. COVID-19 vaccines also reduce the chance of having long COVID syndrome. COVID-19 has reminded us of our interconnectedness. Our actions impact not only our health, but also the health of our communities and beyond. Thank you all for joining us in this discussion. Together we can create a safer, more compassionate world, both during the holidays and beyond. Stay safe, stay healthy. Tune into Health Check with Dr. Norstani weekly to gain insights that can transform your health journey. Let's build a healthier, happier community together. Get ready to be informed, inspired, and tune in with your health. See you on the next episode of Health Check with Dr. Norristani. The opinions and statements made by guests on this show are their own. Noble Productions does not constitute an endorsement or validation of what is discussed.